What at first appears to be a game in a similar vein to Pipe Mania or Bloodier is actually something a little different. Loops was designed for the Atari ST originally, and amongst a plethora of home computer versions, including the ZX Spectrum, DOS and Amiga, there was also an NES port as well as this one. You have an 18x7 grid in which random pieces of pipes need to be placed in order to create full circuits. There's a time limit to place each piece on the grid, which at first is easy enough, but once the grid starts getting more cluttered, it becomes tougher. You have three lives which are lost if you fail to place a piece within the time limit. Loops don't have to be circular by any means, you can make them any size and shape as long as a complete circuit is made. Complete the circuit and those pieces are removed, with the larger loops giving more points. There's a similar risk-reward concept to that which you'd find in Tetris, whereby trying to hold on to get that perfect piece to complete what you're trying to do can garner the biggest scores. Some pieces are just one tile, with straight pieces or corners, and can be rotated to any of the four directions you need. There are larger pieces as well, such as straight sections that are three blocks long, a larger corner, a U-bend, and an often awkward chicane piece. You can also get bombs which can destroy an entire half-made loop. Note that you can block other loops if you need to, but the track cannot intersect with the outermost edge. You can place pieces right at the edge, as long as the track is not touching it. There aren't a lot of rules to follow, really, but the game takes a little practice to get good at. My biggest hampering factor when starting out was my ambition, trying to create massive, elaborate loops which got unmanageable pretty quickly. You're better off sticking to smaller ones at first, else you can be stuck waiting for a certain shape and getting all these silly ones that you just can't put anywhere without messing up. If you take up a large part of the playfield with one loop, you're banking a lot on being able to get rid of it. Those lives will drop pretty quickly. There are three game modes. Game A follows the basic loops rule set that I explained above. You can choose a level, the amount of time per move you're allowed, and the game goes on until you run out of lives. Game B follows the same rules, except you're given a bonus score to meet. The game goes on until you hit that score then it increases. If you can hit the bonus score with one loop, then you go to a bonus stage. The bonus stage is one level of Game C. And game C is totally different. You're presented with a pre-made shape, which is disassembled in front of you piece by piece, and you have to memorize and rebuild it. I'm not as keen on this mode, as it's a memory game rather than a skill one. The music is well composed, quite sinister sounding rather than a jolly jaunt that usually accompanies games like this, and there are three tracks to choose from. The game is unhindered by its presentation. You can see everything just fine, but it's unspectacular. Loops is good for a while despite its learning curve, but whether or not the one-dimensional gameplay stands up to its peers such as Tetris is for history to decide. I'm not so sure it has a great deal of lasting appeal. Thanks so much for watching this video. Let me know your thoughts on the game down below, and if you can spare a second, give the review a quick thumbs up, it really helps out. 
Subscribe to the Portable Power Podcast for a new Game Boy review every day from Monday to Friday. Or, alternately, new episodes of the podcast drop every Saturday and Sunday on whichever platform you get your pods. See you later on.